Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Taurus Rashi. This is a you know part of an ongoing series on the 12 Rashis. I don't normally cover a lot of basic introductory stuff. I I really don't teach anything in a very organized manner here on YouTube. I just wait for my tutoring students to teach it in a more organized manner. Um, so this is actually one of the first, you know, basic introductory videos that I'm making. And so while I do that, I just want to be clear that like the basics are the most important thing, but I've been studying for, you know, over a decade and I already know all these basics. So it kind of feels more like work for me to just go over that stuff. So that's why I don't do it on my YouTube channel. Cause I'm not getting paid. I don't get monetized or anything. And you know, I'm booked up like three months out. So why should I be making YouTube videos every day if I can't, you know, even find time to do the readings for people that have paid me, right? So, you know, and I've been booked up three months out since like, well, like two months back in like 2013, but it's been pretty much around the same the whole time. So then there's like these other astrologers who are just so focused on marketing and YouTube videos and promotion. And there's that law of marketing that if you, you know, put something out and a thousand people see it one person will buy it so if you just constantly churn out youtube videos you'll get readings but does that mean you're really like a true truly amazing astrologer or a truly great reader i don't think so I, again i think that means you're a great business person you're a great marketer and you have a great mercury probably um so that's just something to keep in mind for you guys studying because constantly like the comments i hear people say or just the other stuff that's being said in youtube videos like you really got to think for yourself and think like, wow, does that, how long has that person known that? How long have they used that? Like, you know, the Lajitati Avashtas of Venus that I taught back last fall, I've used that since 2012, like consistently. It works at least 75% of the time. And then once I learned the strengths and how to measure the whole chart and how to really know that technique, it's, I always use it, you know? And so you got to just wonder when you're hearing these people t tell you these techniques, like how many years have they used that? Have they even used it for a year? How many, you know what I mean? Have, have they only been using it for months, weeks, days, what hours? Like what, at what point does it become legitimate? Um, so it's a good question to ask yourself and just remember that saying a little bit of learning is a dangerous thing. It's very, very true for astrology or anything this complicated. Any, I mean, astrology is the super science of omens. We want to talk about tarot then yeah, it's a little easier to just, you know, use your intuition and figure out archetypes. You don't have to spend as many years researching maybe. So um, remember that when you're learning, always remember to learn the basics, stay focused on that. A little bit of learning is a dangerous thing. A student with one year or six months of chemistry experience in a lab could make an explosion, could make a lot of mistakes, but a 10-year chemistry expert would easily just, like you would snicker and think, oh, just rookie mistake, you know what I mean? So chemistry is not even nearly as complicated as astrology. So keep that in mind. A Vedic astrology especially is the most vast and intricate thing that I've ever found in my life. And so I just feel like a lot of people don't approach it from that angle. Like this is the most complicated thing you could ever do intellectually, I think. Um, <laughs> so keep that in mind, right? Don't just be so cavalier about our approach to these things, you know? This is why the scientific world ridicules us and makes fun of us. So anyways, that's a little bit of a, of a side note. Now we're going to talk about Taurus, okay? <sighs> you know, my ruling plant's in a fire sign. It's the hot season, fiery time of the year. It's very tropical out here. Uh, Sorry if I got too opinionated there. Just got to say it. Um, so Taurus in turn is the second sign, the number two. And the number two, an even number, it's about prosperity and acquisition and your resources and connecting to things. It's two. It's not one. So now we have two things. And it's about that connection to them. So uh, the moon is the number two. And the moon gets exalted in the second sign, Taurus. So that's really cool. Taurus is ruled by Venus, though, as many of you know. Venus is the planet of making, um, is the planet of the heart, you know, and the heart chakra and the, uh, the sense of love and desire and what is, what is valuable. You know, Venus has to do with valuation in life. So Taurus is a great sign for, is the sign of, val it's a sign of value in many ways. You know, again, that's why it has to do with resources and uh, acquiring things. 
Venus uh, is the planet that gives one a healthy self-worth. So Taurus is kind of the sign of the self-esteem and one's self-worth. So if Taurus is really afflicted, one can have self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, can kind of devalue themselves at times or feel like they need attention more or this or that, you know, and if someone has really good planets in Taurus, then they aren't usually like that so much. And they're, they just have a good sense of self-worth. So usually attract jobs that make them more money, you know, like they have stable, they're stable, you know, um, the opposite sign Scorpio is kind of sign of instability. So Taurus is the sign of stability. Taurus and the second house in the same way can have a little bit to do with your like family and friends and the close things near you. So Taurus is again about like the resources one has. If you think about it, like the birth is Aries, the first thing. So then Taurus is like the things near you, the thing the person needs to get. Um, in the same way, when a baby was born, the first house is like that birth. Then the second house would rise. And that would be the time when you'd be taking care of the baby, giving it clothing, feeding it, all these things that are all ruled by Taurus or the second house. So Taurus, the second house rules clothing, uh, food and drink um family which would also be near the baby when it was born all the immediate resources and things that it needs oh i forgot to yeah got to show you guys the sutra on taurus i was just freestyling there <laughs> okay taurus um this is from brihat prashara shastra but it's been translated better than normal because the normal brihat prashara was translated from sanskrit to hindi not even that well and then from hindi to english not even that well so it's not the best it's better if you can get a uh, straight from st sanskrit to english translation which is here so taurus is described as veta which means white um ruled by venus uh you know shukra one of the names shukra where we get the name sugar from you know venus makes sense right although jupiter technically rules the sweet taste but uh, venus rules the sour taste but who is a heron mm -hmm. Taurus is ruled by Venus long. So Taurus is long or tall. Taurus is actually the tallest sign. I've got an example of that in a minute. Um, you know, I always notice that the couples where one's really tall, one's really short is usually a Scorpio Taurus thing because Scorpio is the only sign of being short and slender. Taurus is a sign of being tall. So that's an interesting dynamic. Four footed. So again, it's like Aries, it's a quadruped, so it's about being stable and resources and standing your ground. It's a fixed sign, it's kind of stubborn. You know, Taurus is stubborn at times. Um, Taurus is night strong. Uh, again, that's still very mysterious. I'm gonna leave that alone for the time being, but uh, night strong signs will do better at nighttime things. That's one thing I know for sure, like in terms of Mahurta or Prajna. Um, southerly, all the earth signs are southerly or like to dwell in the south. Village living, um, that's really cool actually because Taurus is a cow in a village where it's respected and in India they never ate the bull they never ate the cow so it was this prized cherishable thing I think for Americans one Indian explained it to me like it's more like your dog it's like your you like you wouldn't eat your dog you know what I mean um, it's sort of like that um, the cow is like a mother you know it provides you this milk it would be the last thing in earth you would think of is to kill it anyways um village living so the tour the taurus the bull again it's about self worth it's about venus it wants to go where it's respected it wants to go to the village where it's valued and taurus people really just like have a lot of faith in the village or like the they trust more than say a scorpio or someone else or pisces in just the way of like going into town and getting your things and that's what you need and that'll take care of you um like say if you have k2 in taurus you'll always think that like there's just some like resource you could go into the village and get to solve your problem when really Rahu and Scorpio is saying, no, just be tougher, you know, like, or um, there's no material thing that's going to solve this Scorpio problem. It's an inner invisible spiritual problem. Um, so then, you know, and then likewise, like when K2's in Scorpio and Rahu's in Taurus, I often see the person does not want to trust the world or wasn't really want to embrace the world or the village or kind of like hides out in their little Scorpio world. Um, so village living is a really fascinating sign. And then I also did that video, the series on the environments and Taurus rules villages, neighborhoods, little like suburbs. Um, it's really fascinating how Taurus is described as white in the beginning. 
because now that humans can choose any color of their home that they want, it's not like the old days. It's really funny that suburbs and most houses are white colored, at least where I, in America. Um, but I think in a lot of places, like a tannish white, not too bright, like an off-white. That's what my house is, this guy's house, that guy's house. You know, most houses are, are uh, that the color of Taurus. And Taurus is the sign that has to do with your resource, your little village. Yeah. Um, go watch that series for more on environments. A merchant. Yes, Taurus is about making money. It's an earth sign. It's a vice It's about the, the money. It's about um, skills and crafts. Earthy. Yep, so it's all about physical, tangible results. Rajas, which means stimulating, and it means that Taurus thinks it's the doer, you know? Taurus thinks it's the one that is doing things, whereas if you get a really sattvic sign, like Pisces or Sagittarius, and they're into, well, you know, if the rest of the chart supports it, they're not going to be as likely to feel like they're really the doer. They're going to feel like God is the doer, and the life's just happening through me, you know? But the Rajasic signs are like, no, things work out because of how well I am at this and because of how much money I make. I made my life great. You know, that's easy for Taurus to fall for that. Um, and then back rising is the bull, which is more mysterious. Okay, so now I'm going to show some examples. <clears throat> Here we find... Sigourney Weaver, a famous actress, a star. Um, she played the, it's really cool because, you know, she played a lead female acting role like I was talking about previously, and it was wonderful. It was back in the 80s. You know, she, she was a great uh, kind of role model in many ways. And you see that she had Rahu and Aries, which speaks back to that pioneering thing that I talked about in the previous video on Aries, but she was a Taurus rising. So she's tall. You see, like her body, her ascendant is Taurus. Um, the moon is exalted there. And so she's uh, kind of funny that she is very, very tall. So really tall, slender women will be Taurus. But again, the, the re all the rest of the charts always going to impact your body. So you're not going to see that like every time. But if you average it out, Taurus on average is taller. Mm -hmm. and it's a sign of growth, you know, so it makes sense. Also, she has a ruling planet Venus in the seventh house of being in the public, you know, being a star and all that. Um, here we have the chart of F.W. Woolworth. He used to be one of the wealthiest people alive. So he was a Taurus rising. And again, the sign of wealth, the sign of assets, the sign of uh, just, yeah, accumulating resources and money. So he was one of the wealthiest people ever during his life. And you also can see that his ruling planet Venus goes to the second house of resources and acquisition, just like the second sign Taurus. So that really, you know, where the ruling planet goes shows you going down the path of your life and how that's unfolding for you. So that's really interesting. Um, and again, I'm doing like short, quick examples. I'm not explaining like why a person is the entire life they live. I'm just showing you the ascendant. But if you were curious, you, some of you might have noticed this wonderful yoga that this guy has with the two, for Taurus, Mercury and Saturn are the really auspicious planets. And Saturn's ruling the ninth house, Mercury's ruling the fifth house. So he has this, you know, the fifth and ninth lords in the ascendant. There's a lot that could be said about this. And then Saturn is the 11th cusp lord, which is really important for gains, for making a ton of cash. And then Venus being the second cusp lord, so is the second and 11th cusp lords together. It's really, um, really major placement for being, for being extremely wealthy, having a lot of wealth. Um, this is just a friend of mine. Um, that I've known for a long time, an honest person. So Taurus Ascendant, and I've used this chart before, but uh, he has been a cook, you know, most of his life. He's run a big restaurant, um, huge Indian restaurant. He, he owned part of the business. He's like, he even invented some dishes. Um, and Taurus, again, sign of food, sign of resources, sign of imbibing. He has a nice, and also like a nice little yoga, not as nice as the other one, because Venus is the sixth Lord, but 
Venus and Mercury. He has that fifth Lord um, creativity thrown in there. He uh, He's also a very big Bhakti yogi. Um, and you can, you know, Taurus is a sign of ruled by Venus, which is about devotion. He also has Moon as the Atmakarka, another very devotional planet. And you can see, and he has, he's always had a lot of money and wealth and acquired it very easily too. And we can see that he has Jupiter Mars in the second. If you watch my video on Jupiter Mars conjunctions, then you know that this is a wonderfully lucky placement and a placement for making a lot of money and always being able to acquire money, but also being a practice for being a yogi. So he's also been a Kriya yogi and a Bhakti yogi. And, um, yeah, and he has that wealth combination in the second. So he's always done pretty good when it comes to, to wealth. Oh, and he's also very tall, just like the other, um, just like Sigourney Weaver. I don't know how tall Woolworth was, but this guy is very tall, and he also is one of those people who has dated short um, Scorpio women. Kind of interesting. And, you know, he's, he's into more earthy stuff for being a spiritual a person which is kind of what you'll notice with Taurus some signs it's better for them to be having a spiritual path that's not so worldly or tangible or involving the world for others it is like to have more karma yoga or service in the world you know and you can see these things so Taurus has a little bit more of a sign of service and karma yoga just so you guys know for those of you who are into yoga Jerry Seinfeld another Taurus you know his whole I've talked about this before his whole series whole shows about Taurus because Taurus is the face where the senses are, the face of the creator, the Kala Purusha, and that's where we enjoy life from. You know, it's where the senses are, it's where the eyes see, it's where the nose smells, beautiful smells, where the mouth tastes beautiful things. And so that makes sense that Taurus rules the face. But think about how, yeah, so Taurus is about like has a lot to do with getting what we need to enjoy life and about Venus and enjoyment. And so, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's whole whole series and show was about enjoying life but then like the like the weird little idiosyncrasies of life and you can see that because Rahu is aspecting it and K2 and then the sun is starved there so the thing is he was always like you know moving from one partner to the other he like he, he's like hmm I'm not well, I'll leave it to you guys to speculate upon, um, but if you really know the Vashta of the Sun and Taurus and you really know this Seinfeld show, it makes perfect sense. Let's leave it at that. Um, I don't feel like explaining that because this is a basic video. Now I'm already getting too in depth. Um, George Lucas, we see Taurus Ascendant, a very crafty, very um, creative person. He's actually a real, you know, charitable person. He's always been, you know, he's always like kind of doing a lot of karma yoga ever since he became really famous. He was somewhat like uh, experimental and, and all, and it worked really well for him because of that Mercury um, being delighted by Venus in Taurus and because of other things as well. Um, Rahu in the third and things like that. Um, but yeah, Taurus Ascendant, you know, he's tried to do a lot of good things with, with his money. He's a, he's tries to be a karma yogi, um, really extremely wealthy again, you know, uber wealthy, kind of a kappa type person. Um, Makes sense there. JP Morgan Jr., another uber wealthy, extremely, extremely wealthy person, another Taurus rising. So, just another example of like a Taurus rising, all about accumulating resources, making money, and you know, JP Morgan, everyone knows that name and is associated with money. Is that all of them? Yep, so that's pretty much all of them. So, I hope that guy that gives you guys like a good you know a good feel for the Taurus Rashi and what it's about and then I'm going to keep going through them but that's you know the first sign is about the self the spark of intuition Aries the insight the second sign Taurus is about hmm okay well what do I do to go about that you know what I mean what resources can I get and it's a heavy fixed it's a fixed earth sign there's a really steady energy to it and then at Gemini is when things really pick up and some new event occurs and some you know something uh, steps one up along the cycle and they're, they're swiftly going off on their pattern, their journey, their whatever it is that we're in the context of the zodiac that we're looking at. Okay, thanks you guys.